I've heard it for a lot of years, but you've heard it for a lot longer, and I still marvel at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> still tickles me. <laughs> uh, I tickled my throat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought about you guys. Ever. Did they ever take it for granted? Or so like still, wow. Mm -hmm. Look what came out of our house. <laughs> <laughs> My dad used to say when I was a kid singing with the radio, "Do you have to sing so high?" <laughs> <laughs> One day that will pay off. <laughs> <laughs> so today's talk is called blesses and increases. Most of you know our prayer for prosperity, which is divine love flowing through me blesses and increases all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Blesses and increases. When I came into Unity, I really appreciated that there were practical teachings, that there was a practical way to live spiritually. Because that was my goal. I, I had started through the 12 steps, and then I, a friend of mine took me to Unity, and I heard practical tools to live spiritually so that I didn't have to hate this world that I was in. You know, I didn't have to hate my physical body, and I didn't have to hate you, and I didn't have to hate them, and I, I didn't have to hate this living business. Uh, but because with my practical tools for spiritual living, I could love you, I could love this body, I could love the world, I could love them when I remember. Because that's what it's about. It's still about I have to remember. To, to love love this and that and you and I uh, when I remember that it is divine love flowing through me that enables all of my good it is divine love flowing through me that's how I do the good works and that's how Jesus did the good works it was divine love flowing through him and that's how anyone does their good works it is divine love flowing through them. <coughs> Remember the next part of the prayer is blesses and increases. And blessing is the power of multiplication. How are you blessing your life? How are you blessing your lot in life? Are you blessing it with criticism? Are you blessing it? Remember, oh yeah, divine love flowing through me. I have the ability within me to see good everywhere. As God said, may I suggest, this is the blessed part of your life. That's why I put uh, on our outgoing answer machine, and remember to have the best blessed day that you can. The best, imagine a full day where you just remember, I am blessed. I don't know how, but I'm blessed. <laughs> I am blessed. I am blessed. This is a blessing. This is a blessing. This is a blessing. This is a blessing. Now, in unity, that prayer is done at our love off, time of love offering. You know, it's done at a time of exchange. Because we do want to remember, we're still playing with money. We haven't given up the idea of money yet, so we're still playing with it. But I read something about, <clears throat> this isn't really about tithing for money today, but I do want to read something about tithing in here. A Abraham, a wonderful old uh, father of the one God, he, uh, he tithed to, to Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a spiritual teacher of his and a king of sorts. We don't know much about Melchizedek, except that Melchizedek really represents the Christ in us, the awakening in us. And I read this in, you know, my new favorite book, <laughs> interpretation uh, 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 of the Bible, of the New Testament, 20% off the bookstore. <laughs> that won't be 20% off forever. I got the last case that the author had to be able to do that. I am now. So Hebrews chapter 7 says that Melchizedek symbolizes the Holy Spirit within you, which you have also met. You know this Holy Spirit. You have met it many times, and you recognize its love. Notice the Bible says that Abraham gave Melchizedek a tenth of everything. This is also a symbol of the beginning of the process of awakening. For when one-tenth of your attention is given to the Holy Spirit within, you have begun the process of awakening with the fluttering of your eyes. But listen. But one-tenth of your mind given to awakening is only one-tenth of everything, which means everything is not focused on who you are. I ask you to be willing to accept the Holy Spirit as the voice of your truth. Be willing to give everything 
to the voice that represents all that you truly are. What you give to the Holy Spirit is given for everyone and every, for everything because you are everyone and everything. Everything that you give for healing is given for the healing of all. Everything that you give. We're not talking about our, just our money. We're talking about all our thoughts, all our intentions, all our emotions, everything that I, want, that I give. So I have to look at this and say, what am I withholding? That's my first question. What am I withholding? Am I withholding love for an individual? I remember Carlos once saying that you can only be as close to God as the person you hold at the greatest distance. And my stomach sunk a little bit. My stomach sunk a lot. Because I thought we're heads. <laughs> I've got a few people I'm holding on. And I really embrace what, what I believe about God. But obviously not everything I believe. I'm not embracing, I'm not offering God a hundred percent of Sean. But I do want a hundred percent of God, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Did you, you want a hundred percent of all of God promises, a hundred percent. But if you're like me, you don't necessarily want to give a hundred percent in exchange for a hundred percent. I, there's a few spots, a few categories in my life where I'm still thinking, mm, you know, I, I, God, I hope you'll be more forgiving with me than I am with you. <laughs> I'm hoping that the God box is more available to me than the Sean box is to God, in my ego thinking. That's really kind of what I'm holding out. I was like, okay, I, I don't, <clears throat> if God's will is this, I don't know that I'm interested in God's will. But if God's will is this, oh yeah, I want it. So it tells me I'm still a little bit uh, in conflict. How about you? Are there exceptions to the good of God? Are there exceptions to what you would give to God in, in, in order to experience the all of God? Be it your body, be it your home, be it your friends, be it your money, be it your work, be it your play, be it your being right. That's the main one. I really don't want to give up my being right to God. Although last week I talked about happy to be wrong. And our friend, the new Reverend Roger Mapes, who was here yesterday, I went to his graduation, and he, uh, you know, he takes such joy in being wrong. And I've known the relief of being wrong. I've known the relief, the absolute joy, the freedom of being wrong about another human being, of what I thought about another human being, of what I thought about myself, about what I thought I should be afraid of. Remember, blesses and increases. If I bless my fears, I increase my fears. If I bless my thought of lack, I increase my experience of lack. If I bless my enemy thoughts, then I increase my enemies. It's not a punishment from God. It's just the way it is. It doesn't mean that that's the case in reality, but it is my experience. If I hold thoughts, it's dangerous to go out. Then I stay in believing it's dangerous to go out. If I hold thoughts, it's bad for this and bad for that and bad for that. I've heard people lately talk about, oh, it's terrible this and this terrible thought and this terrible that. What's so terrible? Except that I don't want to have to experience how I feel when I think of it. So I'm hoping you won't remind me of anything I don't want to be reminded of. Could you do that, please? <laughs> Could you please not remind me of anything I'm afraid of? Because I don't want to have to think those thoughts. Because I'm going to blame you. <laughs> I'm going to hold it against you. And then I've got two problems. Now I'm afraid and I'm mad at you. Because you're not making my spirituality easier. But in my memory, in my divine memory, I can bless and increase the thought of God so fast. 
If I remember, it is divine love that flows through me. And love is unconditional. Love is 100% unconditional and will allow me to bless and increase anything that I want to bless and increase. Then take on the thought of love. Love is blessing and increasing my health. Love is blessing and increasing my vision, my correct vision. Love is blessing and increasing, and if you want to play in this world, my money. Love blesses and increases all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Blesses and increases. That love blesses and increases all that I currently have. Remember, we don't really know what we have. So let's just assume everything I have is good. So it blesses and increases all the good that I have. Divine love flowing through me. And then divine love flowing through me blesses and increases all that I give. So am I generous or am I stingy with the world, with life, with what am I generously giving love? Am I generously giving joy? Am I generously giving peace? Am I, and that what that means is, am I willing 100% that you experience love, joy, and peace? Am I 100% willing that you experience love, joy, and peace, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, even if you come up and say something to me that I start to forget I'm good, am I 100% willing that you experience love, joy, and peace? Well, I am if I'm 100% willing that I experience love, joy, and peace. Because you see, if I'm willing to experience love, joy, and peace, which is God's will, I'm sure not going to hold out on you. But how can I see whether or not I'm willing that I experience love, joy, and peace? I've got to look out and see if I'm holding out on anybody else. <clears throat> Is there anybody else that I'm holding out on? On love, joy, and peace. And if there is, that means I'm holding out on myself. That means that I don't want to experience love, joy, and peace. Do you understand that about yourself? If you are withholding love, joy, and peace, from anyone, if there's anyone you think should not, then you think that you should not. You're willing to send yourself into hell, into emotional hell, to hold out on somebody else. Nobody ever goes to hell without you walking on them. <laughs> Let's be very clear on that. You don't send anybody to hell. You walk there with them. You lead the way. <laughs> and, 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 and we need to be really clear on that. So, I wish to walk into the kingdom, the kingdom of God. If I wish to do that, then I've got to look at anyone I'm still holding out on, still holding out on my willingness and say, I don't know how to do this, Spirit. I don't know how, but you do. Holy Spirit, I don't know how to see them clearly, but you do. So I need to see them as you see them. Holy Spirit, show everybody to me as you see everybody. And then I can bless and increase through divine love flowing through me. Then I'm willing to realize, really, that you and I are the Son of God. You and I, you and I, you and I, you and I really are the Son, the divine, blessed child of what is rather than the spawn of what is not. <laughs> you know, I never heard that term before, but really, do you want to treat yourself like you're the spawn of what isn't? No, be the blessed child of what is. It would take being honest. It would take being really honest with oneself. You don't have to go tell everybody the truth about yourself, but you can be the truth of who you are with everyone. Like I said, with the, with the kids that I work with, uh, of Boys and Girls Village and stuff, that we're here to learn how to be big. And being big is when you want to lie and you don't lie. And being big is when you want to steal and you don't steal. And as one kid that told you that, when you want to spit on somebody and you don't. <laughs> now, being big, and I said, so if you're not lying, what are you doing? When you're not stealing, what are you doing? And it took a minute for them to think, and they realized, oh, I'm being honest. 
Honest is not opinionated. Honest is honest. <laughs> they are two different things. Nobody cares about your opinions. Do them to yourself. Do not proclaim to the world what you do not like about the world. It's none of my business what you do not like about the world. And if you hear me doing it, gently, but <laughs> gently remind me. Gently remind me. Gently. <laughs> Don't take a smug attitude. But Sean, oh, Sean's not doing it. And uh, let me tell you what else. If you see Sean, the nice reverend here, not doing it, it's not an excuse for you not to do it. Do not hold me as the one who has to do it, or you can't. I'm here so you can march me into the kingdom. How about that? It's not just for me to march anybody else into the kingdom. I need you guys. I need you guys to wake up and carry me or hold my hand and walk with me into the kingdom. I need you guys to show me the way too because I have, I have a forgetter too. So let's not pretend that I'm somebody I'm not. I'm just the son of God. You're just the Son of God. There are no exceptions to it. Blesses and increases. Divine love flowing through me blesses and increases all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Take that with you this week. Take that thought with you and, con and contemplate what is it I have, what is it I give, and what is it I receive. And then you can dance your way through life. When you wake up and realize there's one source, one supply, one power, one presence, then you can dance your way through life just having the best time. We're supposed to be happy. We're supposed to be having a good time. We're supposed to do work that we love and benefits everyone. We're supposed to play at our work. We're supposed to say nice things about other people. We're supposed to recognize the Christ in each other so that we can recognize it in ourselves. It's normal to be happy. I welcome you to being normal. Mm -hmm.